Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Abdul Karim Baba Aminu. I'm the host for this book chat with the author Yaba Bajo, um, who's written a, a spectacular new book called The Lionheart Girl. She is here with me, and I've had the, the pleasure of reading the book before talking to her. And I, I don't know if I should preempt my, myself, you know, by saying I really, really enjoyed it. It was brilliant. It was dark and weird in all the right ways, the, the way such a, a, a work should. And to be honest, again, probably jumping the gun, I felt it was a bit not quite YA, but maybe YA. Not to take anything away from YA, but, you know, it's just so rich and, and so well woven together. The blurb for the book goes, African myth and magic beat in the dark heart of this fable about witchcraft, superstition, the bonds we choose and those we cannot. Now, while I'm fortunate to have read the book and I couldn't agree more, did Shiva's story come to you dark? Shiva's story came to me gradually, but what prompted it was that Years ago, a relative told me a story about a, a mother uh, in the diaspora who was so keen for her child to return to live in Ghana again that she, she kept the, the child's um, umbilical cord and buried it in the family compound. And that story just simmered away in my mind for years and years and years. And when I was writing Lionheart Girl, I suddenly um, thought, ah, uh, it's, this is about a, a, a young woman trying to gain control of her destiny, but her destiny has been stolen by her mother. So that's the basis of where the story came from. And it came to me gradually. And the more I wrote, the darker it got, because it was a story about the conflict between a mother and a daughter, a mother who wants to uh, keep her daughter in her shadow and a daughter who wants to claim her own power and do what she wants with her life. So that's where the story came from. Also at its heart, like you just said, now it's a deep-rooted conflict between Sheba and her mother, who also has powerful magic, by the way. So much magic in this book. <laughs> is this... <laughs> Is this an analog mother-daughter relationships, maybe taken to the power, you know, 10 or something? Is well, um, I think many mother-daughter relationships and many relationships within families are, are really good and really uh, nurturing. But for some reason, I wanted to look at conflict between a mother and a daughter and I wanted, um, and because of this story that had to been told to me years ago, I just wanted to explore the possibilities of what if your mother wants you to do something that might not actually be good for you, but which um, helps her own interest. What does a, a daughter do in that situation? And so it's really an exploration of um, destiny and futures and whose futures are we living? Is it the future that our, our parents wanted for us? Or is it something we've chosen for ourselves? So that's that was the basis of it. Well, Sheba's family is, to be honest, terrifying. <laughs> um, yeah. But through them, you know, the reader gets to understand the main character more. So th there's, um, there's this really organic way. They all bounce off each other. The characters mm -hmm. complement. It, it's super organic. It's it's a really nifty achievement. I have to tell you that. Now, oh, thank you. Is is putting an ensemble cast difficult or easy? The central character is Sheba, and she is the narrator. So you're seeing everything from her point of view. Uh, but I I wanted a a, a cast of very uh, able, difficult women who are somehow living together. Uh, and, you know, there's the grandmother, Nana Sewa, who's a wise woman and who's the queen mother of the village. There's her youngest sister, who's called Grandma Baby. There's uh, Grandma Baby's daughter, Aunt Clara. There's um, uh, Aunt Ruby. And they all have their own peculiar gifts, like Grandma Baby has the gift of sense, so she can smell trouble on the wind and if she she works with 
ointments and and essential oils and um she can smell how you are whether you're happy or sad or distressed and so on and i just wanted a, an ensemble cast of people who had peculiar remarkable gifts and i wanted to see what would happen and how sheba as the character would find her own self through all this and um and then develop as a human being herself thanks little bits and pieces the ingredients that make it really all gel together and some of it is the african culture specifically ghanian culture mm -hmm. i'm fortunate enough you know to be conversant with some ghanian culture you know growing up and all that and it, i smiled when i saw the name perempe did i pronounce it properly perempe yes yeah yeah okay so yeah. now i i had a um, i had an english teacher who mm -hmm. was called uh, mrs perempe and kids being the nasty little things they can be because <laughs> kids we would call her mrs pemperempe which i think back then meant trumpet and boy did she trumpet so for me reading the book i was seeing her face so it, i do, for so many different reasons i i had a, a really good connection to the story and and i feel i'm fortunate so mm. maybe other readers might not necessarily get the exact experience i mean but you know that's beside the point how much in tune are you with your ghanian roots because believe me it's really evident in your mm. in your work so how 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 much in tune would you say you are well in tune i'm not sure how in tune i am um but my earliest memories are uh from ghana um and although i went i was sent to school in britain when i was very young i've been going back and forth all my life and i find the older i get the more my writing is about returning home and exploring the context of of uh home home meaning ghana and home meaning um a slightly fantastical uh village which i've created in lionheart girl which of course is not a a real village um uh but it's it's something i i'm just very interested in in trying to to explore uh what life in ghana might have been like a long time ago but making it as present day as possible so i guess it's it's about my imagination uh where my imagination takes me and how my imagination reconstructs home as i would like it to be even though i'm based in london if you follow what i mean yeah yeah absolutely yeah. now you just mentioned your imagination so speaking mm -hmm. of that how did the idea come to you to write lion heart girl i mean that that's a pretty doc question but i i really want to know because what what was the trigger maybe springboard is the right word i don't know but how did it come to you i wanted to create a character who is clearly living under the shadow of her mother and i wanted to explore how this character sheba um finds her strengths and then manages to uh protect and champion her village even though she's young even though she's uh quite timid by nature i wanted to see how she would develop and have the courage of a lion so that's where the story came from so you have a um powerful female characters mm -hmm. are your forte it's 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 quite clear now how does it feel bringing them to life and just how much of some of them is autobiographical <laughs> well, when i go home i'm always amazed well no longer amazed just so many of my family members women family members are are very very powerful women i think if you come from any part of west africa you're not surprised that women are very vocal women are often larger than life and humorous eloquent forceful so i've grown up in that sort of environment and my aunts my uh nieces my grandmothers my um large extended family the women are right at the forefront of most things uh and are very energetic and dynamic and powerful so 
I'm not surprised that women are like that in, in the stories I write, because this is the life that um, I, I always come across when I'm in, in West Africa and, uh, and also in London. There, you know, there are many powerful women. But, but what, what surprises me is that women aren't more at the forefront of political life in Ghana and that I don't see why I don't understand why men always seem to get there before women but as, as far as family life and family dynamics women rule the roost I think though of course men are important as well the, the backdrop of the story you know the witchcraft the mm. powers and everything mm. is practically an entire genre of its yes. own subgenre yeah. Yeah. yeah still you know lionheart girl still comes across as very fresh and i can tell you it's not just because of the setting mm. you know it's not just because of the characters i mean those are definitely fresh but i think it's it's something about your your writing style. It, it's mm. very heartfelt, which sometimes I've noticed is not usually the case in fantasy. You mm. know, a lot of people spend so much time and effort world building, but you built your world by building your character very well and mm. the other characters by extension. So um, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out your craft here, you know, how you go about it because it's it just gels so well how do you how do you bring the fantastical you know and mm. ground it in the believable how how do you pull that i don't know how it's done really but i think the where, where the the story started it was um uh sheba at 7 years old running away from home to look for her father because mm -hmm. her mother refuses to tell her her father's name and yes. she wants to find her father and uh, so she runs off to look for her father and and I think partly because when I was that age at seven when the world is very new and fresh when the, you know I, I, even as an old person I think life is magical but I think life appeared more magical when I was younger and I sort of remembering that sensation of the wind having a character, the sun having a character, clouds moving and feeling that, you know, all the, the natural world was focused on me and that I was a part of it. I think when, when you begin a story from the viewpoint of a child, it's, it's, it's easy to make uh, the text quite magical. I think that's where I'm coming from. And also because I wanted this, um, this sort of fantasy village to be a village where um, everybody knows everybody else. And it is a, a, a secret hidden place. And if somewhere is shielded from the rest of the world, you can, you can make it even more wonderful than life is in real life. I believe very much in using the elements like the river is the, the a seam that runs through the book and also through the village and the the, vill the river is alive and um, the forest is just at the end, end of the horizon um, and there's the cotton tree which uh, also is slightly magical and um, and I and I just sort of if you sort of ground stories in uh, the power of the natural life, then I think it, by default, it becomes um, uh, quite a, you know, quite an extraordinary story. It's about, it's about using childhood effectively and using um, the wonder of the natural world and that you use that to build a, and to create a, a scenario which uh, envelops the reader. In, in the totality of that uh, magical, imagined world. Now, you're also an accomplished filmmaker mm -hmm. with about 14 films to your credit as producer yeah. and director. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, <laughs> not easy. <laughs> yeah. Now, how much is that part of you, you know, how, how much of that part of you comes to bear in your writing work? Or is it the other way around? 
I think the two mediums feed into each other, filmmaking and writing, in the sense that as a writer, I think I'm very visual in the way I describe scenes. I sort of see a place, then I, I, I you know, I write it. And, and like I said, the natural world is, is very important to me. So, um, I, I, yeah, I think both, both uh, film and uh, writing, fiction, they, they bleed into each other as far as um, yeah. I'm concerned and they help amplify each other. So when it's, I'm making a film, I'm very clear about when I write a treatment that uh, that gives me maneuver and space to to take events as they happen. And in writing, I use the visual world to um, to build my world and to build my characters. And one of the films I made was a film about a community of witches in northern Ghana called The Witches of Gambaga. And I used some of the whole the, the superstitions around witchcraft to build the world of Lionheart Girl. Speaking of movies, um, of course, this has to come up at some point, so it might as well be right now. Mm. Um, do you have any plans to make any of your books into a movie? When I when I finish a book, uh, I just feel that you know I, my work is 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 done well i i think that you know reading and writing is very linked and that what happens when people read a book is they they dance with the imagination of the writer and but once i've written it my work is done but if anybody else wants to make my books into movies they're very welcome to have a go at it because uh i think you know they would lend themselves very well to uh to drama because they are dramatic um, you know, Lionheart Girl is a very dramatic story. It's a very vivid story, which touches on a lot of th universal themes, like mother-daughter relationships and uh, themes of uh, a village that's hidden and a, a village for runaways uh, that has been operating for centuries. So at the start, you know, uh, there were runaway slaves who managed to get to the uh, village. Now there are runaway witches and people who are in desperate need of shelter. And there, the village is made up of, of all these refugees who need a home and need a place of safety. Um, I, I've seen a, a movement towards uh, recently, and I mean maybe in the past four, five, maybe six years, a, a movement towards accepting you know, parts of um, African culture, our culture basically, you know, accepting it and not giving it, mm. um, even traditional religion seems to be enjoying yeah. more respect recently, yeah. even from people who are not necessarily adherents of whichever one it is. Mm. So um, what is your take on uh, African traditions and, you know, how they seem to be staging a comeback, so to speak? Well, I was raised as a Christian and I... Uh, still have many Christian beliefs. However, I think during colonization in Ghana um, and in many parts of West Africa, uh, we were made to look down on our, our traditional religions. Now, I think all religions tend to be very fearful of the power that women have mm. to uh, conceive and to have children. So whether it's Christianity, African traditional religion, Islam or Hinduism, I think there is a fear of women, which means that women are demonized in all traditions and religions. However, I, uh, I think it's really valuable for us to uh, have a relationship with the world around us in a way that doesn't uh, allow us to exploit the natural world given the climate crisis. And I think traditional approaches in religion, especially African um, traditional religion, which sees the world as sacred, which sees wood and the sea and, and the earth as sacred, is actually much more in tune with how we develop a sustainable approach 
to the climate and to our, our lives than the, the capitalist model. So in many ways, I'm very for uh, trying to revere and understand our traditions rather than going through the idea that man sh has got dominion over the earth and uh, we should just exploit the earth until we all die. So that's my position. And I think it's it's high time we, instead of demonizing our traditions, we we examined them and explored them and decided which elements we want to retain and, uh, and nurture. When you were done writing Lionheart, yeah? Mm. And you handed it over to your publisher or editor or who the first um, line of attack was, yeah? Mm. What was their response? I'm, I'm just curious because of the <laughs> sheer freshness of this book. Well, I have a brilliant editor called um, Fiona Kennedy. And initially, she wanted to see the first 100 pages. And when I gave her the first 100 pages, she made some very, very, very uh, astute comments so that I, I, I rearranged the first 100 pages. And then I went on. And um, eventually, when I, I, I gave her the completed manuscript, she said she really, really enjoyed it. And as a writer, that nothing is nicer than having a positive response to something you've worked really, really hard on. And of course, she gave me a lot of editorial input and things were readjusted and, and uh, the time frame between Sheba being a child and then a teenager was smoothed out so it was easier for the reader to understand at what point she was at during the story. It was really, really wonderful having positive feedback to something you've spent a lot, long time with and a character you love as if she's your child. The character of Shiva, yeah, is she's flawed. She has her flaws, but just so, in my opinion, so heroic. She <laughs> she she soldiers on no matter what. And I'm trying very hard not to drop any spoilers for people who at this point haven't read the book. Mm. But for me, she also adds to what seems to be an ongoing, a new tradition of you know strong female lead characters in mm. books not necessarily written by women some there's a few men who write women very well mm -hmm. thank you you know <laughs> 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 so um do, do you see this trend that i seem to be that, that i'm noticing you know do, do you notice it too i don't I, want to use the the term renaissance re renaissance but yeah you know I, I'm I'm very I mean I write stories that I wish I had I had when I was 12 years old or in my teenage years the, the sort of thing that I would like to reach out for and so they center on black african diasporic uh teenagers usually a female lead um because that they're the stories that I wanted when I was that age and you know I think it's very hard to survive in life as an African woman or child unless you learn how to be strong. So a lot of my stories are about using what you have to further the, the world and to make the world a better place because that's what I think it's, it, that's the most important thing in life, to whilst you're alive, to do what you can to improve not only your own situation, but the situation of, of people you care for. What kind of story were you out to tell with Lionheart Girl? Now, I'm trying to understand, you know, the, the push of the story itself, mm. you know. Because of the stage where Sheba is, where you know, the book progresses quite far, are we going to... It's probably too early. And I always get flack for this question. Mm. In fact, mm. someone tossed... Uh, a book at me once when I asked her the same question so <laughs> thank god it's video um, <laughs> is there going to be another book a sequel to Lionheart Girl? I really enjoyed living with this cast of characters and it's really possible that there might be another one or two books in in a sort of trilogy but at the moment having just finished it I would like to work on something else before I do another part in her story but there are all sorts of possibilities because 
it's a hidden village it's untouched by the world and yet the world impacts on it so there are lots of scenarios that could uh, be used to develop the themes in Lionheart Girl and I think I could return to it again yeah um, okay, so speaking of themes, you just mentioned themes. Now, what analogies would you say you placed um, intentionally within the story? I mean, I've seen I've seen a, f a few. So, but which ones would you say you placed there intentionally? Tom, first of all, I, I'd like to ask you a question. What were the analogies that you saw? What were the themes that 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 uh, meant something to you like the one of the outside world impacting yeah. a yeah. hidden world mm -hmm. you know and not necessarily for the better mm -hmm. like that one like the mo mother daughter relationship mm -hmm. for instance uh -huh, yeah what other ones did you deliberately put in there i was quite interested in um the character of gaza um the boy who is clearly abused by his father and who tries to express himself using a harmonica. Gaz is also haunted by his mother. So I, I, I was quite interested in the theme of distressed children and how they can find a uh, resolution. Because in a way, Sheba is a distressed child in that she's searching for her. She's in a quest, on a quest to find her father. I loved uh, Maybe's character. A uh, maybe is a a, a child who um, is haunted by uh, his uh, siblings who are dead, and who is in communication with them all the time. The world of the dead and the world of the living merging constantly, and the ancestors having a hold on uh, what we do right now. So those are the themes that I wanted to explore, and which I think I I, I did because. Uh, during the time of COVID, there was so much death around, and, uh, and death entered the story. You wrote Lionheart um, in during um, the the whole COVID lockdown period. Yeah, well, I I started it before I started it before COVID, but I finished it and uh, worked on it and completed it uh, during the time of COVID. So somehow it you know the whole notion of uh, of death was very present as I was writing it. She yeah. was a young character. She's young. And you know how it's usually difficult? I mean, not impossible, but mm. difficult for um, male writers to write female characters. How, how easy was it? it? She was such a believable young person. Did you just write her out of your heart? You deliberately there, there was this effort or how how did you how did you pull it basically this is another craft related question yeah well i think like i said before um it's uh, about i i think we 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 contain all the elements of the person we are and so it doesn't take much when you use your imagination to remember what it was like to be young to remember what it's like to be bewildered and frightened, to remember what it's like to want to hide behind an adult uh, who should protect you, and then discovering that that adult is not protecting you but wants to use you, and then bit by bit to find the courage to, to stand up for what you think is right with the help of your grandmother, with the help of your aunts, and. Uh, and I think, it, although Sheba is the main character, uh, there's a lot of nurturing adults who help her make the right choices and who help her uh, become a champion for her village. And just like, you know, people say that it, it doesn't take one person to, it, what's that, that expression about, you know, it, it takes a whole village to bring up a child. To raise a child, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I, I believe that the book, uh, Lionheart Girl is an example of how the whole village yeah. uh, helps Sheba become the, the, uh, it, the whole village helps Sheba uh, fulfill her potential as a human being mm -hmm. and as a ship, shift, uh, what's the word? Uh, shapeshifter, which she is. Shapeshifter. Too. Yeah. 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 When are you going to write a book with a Nigerian protagonist? I, I have no plans to do that just yet, 
but my the 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 story I'm working at at the moment um, is about a black British boy, and he's going to discover that in many ways uh, Africa is in him, and he is part of Africa, even though he's black British and of Caribbean origin. So maybe Nigeria will come in there. Um, but uh, I have no specific plans to write a Nigerian character per se, but I'm really into the fact that, like you say, we are all one people, we're all connected, and, uh, we, and the future belongs to us, I believe. So um, now still on your craft, you know, Yeah. Um, how do you filmmaker? Uh, so many other things you do and then you write mm. how how's your typical day like in relation to writing how how do you sit and you know yeah write basically yeah. How, how how does it start well my day uh, usually starts at about seven o'clock but i i'm a slow riser i take my time getting up um i might do some exercises before i start have something to eat uh check twitter blah 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 social media then i like to begin if i'm very serious i'll begin at nine o'clock um but if i'm sort of uh doing other things as well i'll begin by 11 at the latest and i'll i'll put on my um app which prevents me get it going online and i will write straight for about uh three four hours and with a few intervals just to stretch my legs, maybe have a cup of tea, herbal tea, whatever. And uh, and I just think it's about actually spending time with your characters. You, uh, uh, I might have a, a, a plan, but I don't write detailed uh, plans for a book. I, I, I let the story emerge. I, I have a character and the character will start talking to me and will will help me uh, tell her story. That's the way it goes for me. Other people are are very detailed in their chapters and their you know uh, point by point what's going to happen. I'm not like that. I like the story to un unfold itself and tell itself to me as I'm writing it. Basically, in a very organic way. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. But every every so, writer is different. Yeah, yeah. Now, are, are there any plans for um, a Nigerian edition of your book? Because currently, I think it's just um, in, it's available in the UK and it, and the US, it, I, right? Yeah, I, I think when it's published, um, it'll be. Uh, I think there are some shops in Nigeria that should be able to sell it. But the thing mm. is, I, I I haven't yet worked out, and you know. I think it's becoming more and more important to me that um, uh, people in West Africa should be able to have easy access to the work that I do, my writing, my stories. And I'm, I need to talk to my publisher to, to see how that can be made to happen. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah the, the stories definitely resonate um, with this African. So that's right. I'm sure I can speak for the rest yeah. of us. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and it should be available for people to buy. Uh, so yeah. it's about distribution, really. Um, so I, I'll speak to my publishers to see how that can happen. I'll not be selfish. Um, a few fans reached out over social yes. media and asked a few questions. So I've narrowed them down to two because yes. some of them are similar. And yeah. um, one of them is from Leila Remy Adeleke, and she's asking from Lagos. She, after saying she's a huge fan, mm -hmm. and then she says, how often do you visit Ghana, and does it factor into your art? Yeah, I try to visit Ghana as often as possible. I try to go every year, but I haven't been able to go this year or last year because of COVID. Um, but when I'm in Ghana, I feel that I'm at home and I love uh, the Ghanaians, you know, Ghanaian words that enter uh, pidgin and English and so on. And it definitely, it, Ghana is where I feel I can breathe and where I, I find it easiest to write. So it's very important for me to spend time in Ghana. 
Then there's uh, Mariam Abdullahi in Kaduna, who says it's an admittedly silly question. <laughs> yeah. She asks simply, Ghanaian jollof or Nigerian jollof? Ghanaian jollof all the time. <laughs> Ghanaian jollof. As far as jollof is concerned, I'm a nationalist. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there you go, Mariam. That answers your question. <laughs> so, <laughs> but as, as for pepper soup, Pepper soup, mm -hmm. Nigerian mm -hmm. pepper soup. Yeah. Ah, yeah. we have a winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I noticed in, in Lionheart Girl, food is mentioned. And oh, it, it, yes. It's, it's really, yes, it's, food is mentioned respectfully. <laughs> and there are lots of Nigerian <laughs> words like wahala. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. We, we exactly. use that a lot in, in Ghana. Wahala, wahala, ah, wahala. Wahala. I think it's probably that, of course, the fact that we're neighbors and, I mean, the borders are just, mm. they're imagined, they're yeah. political and, yeah, but, but we're one people, really. Exactly, you know? exactly. One people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I have to, um, you know, put this up here. This is the book we're talking about, <laughs> Lionheart Girls. It's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I enjoyed every minute of it. And when I went to a coffee shop, you know, yes. slash book, bookshop to read it, finish it, um, there was a particular person who kept walking past deliberately to, to look at it. <laughs> so eventually she, you know, gathered enough courage to ask, that book is out already? <laughs> <laughs> then I looked at her with not, you know, with more than a little, you mm. know, glee. I'm like, mm. no. <laughs> and she looked at me, she's like, okay, thank you. And she walks off, you know. Okay. So what I'm saying is it's really, really good. It's it's like we said, it's about Sheba, you know, her, her mother, other loads of other characters yeah. in this really fantastical village really fantastical story grounded in reality funny enough i don't know yes. how yeah but does that but <laughs> it's a must read it's it's really really good i i love the the writing it's like prose and poetry and it it lives it breathes oh, thank you so I just, much Abdul i just Karim. love thank it you. i just thank love you. it thank you very thank much you. yaba yeah and now because of the fantastical elements the, yeah. the rich world you've built the mm. really layered characters you've created everything mm -hmm. it, it all combines and then i always you know not that i forget you're a filmmaker but but when I'm engrossed in the book, it's me and the book and you as a writer, you know, so mm -hmm. I, I forget you're a filmmaker. But then I look at everything together. It comes across as it's so cinematic and it would translate mm -hmm. so well to the big screen or that would be screen. wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so fingers that, crossed. It, fingers crossed. And we'll, yes, probably get an announcement soon because yeah. it is a really beautiful, layered, well-told story. Well, thank you thank so you much. Thank you very much, I, Yaba. I'm really glad that you enjoyed it. Thank you very much indeed. It's an honor talking to oh, you. Oh, it's, it's been such a big, pleasure. Big, big, big fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Let me introduce a new way we change the rules, a new app that you can use. Wanna change your life? Then choose. Save money and invest. Pay bills when you decide. Safe and secure for you when you need a loan. Request it. One bank for you. One bank for me. So chill and enjoy the ride. Stop the current account on it. One bank. One bank by Sterling. Open a current account and start transacting. That five minutes madness only you can understand. Visit myspecter.com to get your Spectre experience. Spectre. Loans in five minutes.